Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Harvey Beck at Lester Memorial United Methodist Church. We're glad you're joining us uh, on this morning on Wednesday, March the 16th, uh, 2022, as we make our way through the Lent, Lenten season and all those all the Easter season. Uh, Easter will be on April the 17th. So tonight at church, we are doing one of our studies on the penitential Psalms. In fact, we're going to Read two psalms, if you get this today and you're coming tonight, be sure and go ahead and read, let me make sure I've got it, Psalms 32 and 38. So we'll be looking at Psalm 32 and 38 about the fact that God allows us to return and we hear from David about how that he repents and how we repent, conviction, what sin is. And so my sermon this Sunday too is going to reflect on continuing to that thought of returning to the Lord and as a result of that, I will be talking about sin and the fact that we can repent. And uh, I want to show a picture with you to you that uh, I got from a friend here at church, Rick Townsend. So some of you from our church know who I'm talking about. He took a picture about a week ago, still in March, which is a little early to be seeing a good old snake. But anyway, and uh, most of the time we just call these black racers they're different names, but uh, he said it was probably around five feet long. And a few days ago, when, before the snow came this past weekend, you know, we had several days of 70-degree weather about a week and a half ago or so. And so that's when he saw it, and it showed up. And so uh, it got me to thinking about going back and looking at Satan, who we know is called the serpent in the book of Genesis as well as in the uh, Revelation. It reminds us that he is a serpent of old. And... Uh, I got to thinking about that. I probably won't share all this in my sermon Sunday, but anyway, I still have a lot of questions about why he showed up with Adam and Eve in the book of Genesis as a serpent. They're talking to him. They don't think that's odd, but of course, maybe all the animals talked, or maybe they just didn't, thought it was normal for a snake to talk, because again, we're only in chapter three by the time we mess up with sin. And so the title of my sermon this coming Sunday is Sin Slithers Like a Serpent. Sin slithers like a serpent. You can't say that five times fast. But so I went back and I just read again, and I'm going to read part of it to you about humanity's first sin and how it happened in Genesis 3. And you know, it just simply tells us that a serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. The serpent then spoke and said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, well, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the garden, God said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. So Satan is being sneaky and slithery already and cunning with his questions and the way he worded it to try to almost trick her. He still does the same thing today. He's the accuser of the brethren. He comes to kill, to steal, and destroy and if he can get us into sin, that's exactly what he wants. And that's exactly what he did with Adam and Eve in the remainder of this story. Um, the servant said to the woman, uh, you're not going to die. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're not going to die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not die for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And remember, one of Satan's downfalls was he wanted to be God. And so he transfers this on to us to make ourselves like we think we're God and we can do whatever we want to. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and she ate. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. And then the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked. Nakedness and shame had not been a part of paradise until that moment. It's the same way when we sin and the shame comes or the guilt comes and we know that we've been, we feel that conviction. So they hid themselves. The eyes of both of them were open and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves covering. We also try to cover up our sins. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden of the cool of the day and Adam and his wife, they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. We still do the same thing. Sometimes we try to hide as if we can hide from God who knows everything about us. And so we try to keep away from his presence because it makes us uncomfortable because we know we have sinned. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said, where are you? Which is interesting. 
God knew where he was, because I used to think, well, that's a strange question. Where are you? But what God was really asking, God knew where he was not. And that was in the close personal relationship that God had had with them prior to this moment. Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded that you should not eat? And again, just sadness for the human race that in the Bible, we don't even make it past chapter three before we blow it. But we had a little encouragement from a serpent. And again, why a serpent? You know, I've got all kinds of questions and why was he able to talk? And they didn't think that was strange. But again, they why would they know any difference? And so they just had this conversation with this animal. And it turned out to be um, a sneaky way to bring them in to sin. Now, sometimes Satan does make us sin, but sometimes it's our own human nature because we're born into sin. We need a Savior. That's why Easter is such a big deal. Well, in the book of Revelation, it declares and mentions again that he is the serpent. It goes this way, and war broke out in heaven. I'm in Revelation 12, 7 through 11. War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with a dragon. The dragon and his angels fought. They did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. So that's a part of his, his ways of doing things, deceives us. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying from heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of the brethren who accused them before God day and night has been cast down, and they overcame by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony about that blood, and they did not love their lives to the death. The problem <laughs> with all of us humans all the way back to Adam and Eve is the sin problem but they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They testified about what God has done for them. You and I need to be thankful and grateful during uh, the Easter season because of the blood of the Lamb and the fact that we too can testify. I've been redeemed. I've been forgiven. I don't have to die in my sins. The truth that the living God allows us to return to him, which is our theme during Easter. The truth that the living God allows us to return to him because of his mercy and because of his grace is why Easter is such a wonderful celebration. We read the back of the book and we win. Praise God for Easter. Praise God. Thank God, thank God Almighty, we can return because of his mercy and grace. I hope you have. If you haven't, right now, just ask him to forgive you. Ask him to cleanse you and to create in you a clean heart, O oh God, as David cried in Psalms 51. And he'll do that because he's a merciful God and he is a God who wants to extend grace to us and allow us to return. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.